Hello, this is Jamie Mitchell. We are back from our episode of the Libertarian Censored Podcast, going over all the posts in the Libertarian Censored subreddit. Let's get right into it. So first we have Newsom's controversial hemp THC ban approved, effective immediately from sfgate.com by Patan 13. And yeah, you know, I personally think the state has the power to ban whatever it wants to, but that being said, I don't think that that justifies any ban. You know, this, the people should be able to do whatever they want as long as they're not hurting, hurting anyone else. And I think if people want to use hemp, they should be able to... With that being said, you know, I don't think you should just be out in the street smoking weed all day, you know. I think people should be productive members of society. But with that being said, if people want to, want to be out in the street smoking weed all day, I think they should be able to do so. Then next we have Schoolhouse Rock Mag Edition. That's from Tom Fertine. And that's an Instagram post from uh, Calf Clown, it looks like. And it's a it's uh looks like it's a party of the I'm just the Bill Schoolhouse Rock thing. Only instead of I'm just the Bill the Bill, it's the Project 2025. You know, I'm 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 personally very tired of the Project 2025 fear mongering. It's just you know it's just I think it's just because the Democrats have realized that January 6th have gotten stale, so they needed to replace it with something else. But Project 2025 is you know it's just a uh, Republican ideological masturbation, pretty much. And none of it I would say has any realistic chance of passing, or maybe just like only like. Two to five percent of it at most, and that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have I fucking hate it here from VYSVV, and that's crossword from the Complete Anarchy subreddit. Stop, and it's the Doctor Suit Sauce Suit Spook Hop on Pop, only with the text Hop on Pop and replaced with Stop blowing up brown kids with my fucking tax wealth with my fucking healthcare money. And I agree with that very much. You know, I think. Uh, I'm personally not for um, state uh, the state and in being involved in healthcare at all. But with that being said, I think uh, the taxpayer money we're spending on our uh, blowing up brown kids would probably be better all spent with, if people if the, for on people's healthcare if people wanted the state to provide their healthcare for them. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have. OK State Superintendent Ryan Walters wants $3 million for Bibles in the classroom. And that's a tweet from Dylan T. Brown. Just announced Ryan Walters, superintendent, is asking for $3 million for Bibles in the classroom for this year's budget. The OSDE meeting has begun. And then that was posted by Legio like, X. And, um, yeah, um, I personally don't think we need a separation of church and state, but ultimately, if the state wants to pay, if, people, if taxpayers do want to pay money for um, Bibles in public schools, I think they should be able to. You know, ultimately, I think, you know, we need the state out of education entirely, I would say. But, you know, ultimately, if the taxpayers do want to pay for Bibles in schools or their um, left-wing equivalent in, like, uh, pride flags in schools, then I guess, you know, they should be able to do so. With that being said, I personally think the, the church, the state, should be entirely separate from education, and that's my thought on that issue. Then we have child labor and child sex abuse. I think I found who LPNH will endorse for governor from GranitePostNews.com by Patan 13, and that's linked to a story from Granite Post. Kelly Ayotte's oversight failure blames failures blame for child labor abuses at Blackstone backed company. And yeah, you know, I personally don't care for hers that much since he's a Republican, but that's it. But this is just, you know, this is just because they're only going after her because he has an R next to her name. When they have a D next to their name, they know they never go after them unless they deem them, um, unless, unless they descend up from the official DNC narrative like P. Diddy or, um, Eric Adams, then they go after them. So it just goes to show you that they only go after those who are deemed to be innocent enough rather than going after them because they are guilty. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Moldovan Man stands up to Russian soldiers' harassment in his own country from VYSVV. And that's a crossword from the public figure out freak out subreddit. Russian soldiers harass Moldovan Man for recording a checkpoint in Transnistria. And yeah, I personally don't think, you know, soldiers should be harassing anyone. But the thing with the military is just like the police, they have the force of the state on their side to do however, whatever they want. And sadly, that's the, the, the world we live in currently. And that's my thoughts there. Then we have ex suspense journalist Clan Klippenstein over publication of J.D. Vance dossier. The free speech absolutist has once again silenced a journalist he didn't like, said one observer. From commondreams.org by ch 4 Locks. And yeah, you know, I personally think, um... People should have the free speech to say whatever they want. With that being said, you know, it, do, it did have J.D. Vance's personal address listed. And, uh, you know, that could go against, you know, 
that could be, be against you know the terms of, of the terms of service of uh, Twitter. But that being said, you know I knew, I think I remember after Roe v. Wade, they they uh, one subreddit listed all the, the, the Supreme Court justices addresses that voted against uh, that voted for overturning it, and that seems to be still up. So that just goes to show you how like, I guess it determines whether they're in the in group or the out group. You know, if it was uh, Tim Walls dossier and it had his address in it, you know, maybe Elon would Elon and Twitter staff would justify keeping it up. I don't know, but you know, ultimately. I think all speech is free speech, so I do think, you know, it should be... If I ran Twitter, I personally would have kept it up. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have more trans teens attempted suicide after states passed anti-trans laws. The study shows from NPR.org by ch 4 Locks, And, yeah, I personally think, you know, um... You know, this is it's, it's this is kind of the kind of bully and gaslight you into sporting any 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 or anything that's labeled as LGBTQ rights at all. If if the, if they if you don't, they say, oh, we're we're all going to commit suicide. You know, that's that's just like a classic four year old tactic. You know, when a four year old says, "Mommy and Daddy won't give me what I want. Oh, I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to pretend to stop breathing." And you know, ultimately, I think you know transgender people have the right to do whatever they want to. But that being said. You know, you should be. It, it should be a reasonable. Re, any reasonable. Any disc, Any any dissent at all is going to be seen as being anti LGBTQ, even if it's get, even if it's top and bomb surgeries for five year olds being against those. And that's very much what we're seeing here. I would say, you know, so you know, do whatever you want with your own body, but just be aware that some people might consider that top and bomb surgeries for five year olds might be child abuse, might be considered, considered to be child abuse. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Murdered by Their Own Words from Ragnar OKXT, and that's a cross post from the Murdered by Word, Word, Word subreddit. And now, I think we talked about this in the last episode with Chase Lodge. We may rest in peace, and may those who are ignored the calls for stopping this never have a good night's sleep for the remainder of their lives. Hashtag Marcellus Williams, hashtag Marcellus Williams matters. And then the LPNH said, Marcellus Williams was a fucking murderer, you gay. Uh, our slurred communist, and then the Libertarian Party of Louisiana shares that they have, we oppose the demonstration of the death penalty by the state in the, in the LPNH's own platform. So, yeah, you know, ultimately, I think they could support, um, it sounds like they could support, um, the death penalty. I know the guy who probably posted that did say he wanted to bring back public executions, but with that being said, I don't think that what that that specific comment supports the death penalty because you know he can still be a fucking murderer and not not and not and also and you, and, and not um and, and that's not advocating for the death penalty I would say even if they might advocate for the death penalty in other comments and that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have congressperson following the GOP party leader's example spreads more hate and bigoted lies about innocent people from CH4 locks. And that's a cross from the insane people's Facebook subreddit. That's a tweet from the, the big extreme was tweeted by a member of Congress. And that was Rep. Clay Higgins tweeting, LOL, these Haitians are wild, eating pets of voodoo, nastiest country in the Western Hemisphere, cult, slapstick gangsters, but demand if they don't feel like all sophisticated now, filing charges against our president and VP. All these fucks better get their mind right and their ass all out of their country before January 20th. And that was him replying to the AP posting Haitian groups in Springfield, Ohio, fart files this and criminal charges against Fisher and Vance. And my thoughts on that are, um, you know, he should have, I personally wouldn't think that's kind of being over a little overly mean to the Haitians, but, you know, he has the free speech rights to say whatever he wants to. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Trump Pale, senior advisor, approves of states that want to set up full menstrual service departments, mandatory monthly pregnancy inspections from RawStory.com by CH4 Locks. And, yeah, you know, I think he's, he's, he's more saying that it should be up to the states whether or not they want to do something like that. But that being said, you know, the states can be authoritarian just like the federal government can, and that's important to remember as well. So that's my thoughts there. Then we have Argentina's poverty rate soars above 50% under Javier Malay from FT.com. From Bright Frosty Slow Man, that's from the Financial Times. And yeah, you know, I think that's just kind of, you know, they'll they'll find a way to smear anyone who dissents it all from the official narrative. You know, it's not a coincidence that they're trying to smear Javier Malay here, despite and he also went to the UN saying, Screw you, screw your all your new all your all your um protocols. I'm 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 gonna have my own protocols that are liber are libertarian rather than collectivist garbage. And that just goes to show you, you know, they, can't, they they won't allow any dissent at all. If you dissent from them, they'll publish all these smear pieces like this. And that's my thoughts on that issue. 
Then we have Letter Protecting Immigrants in Rural North Carolina from CH4 Locks, and that's crossword from the anti fascist the Right subreddit, anti fascist Letter Protecting Immigrants from Rural North Carolina. It says immigrants. One of my favorite film series as a kid was Indiana Jones, so I learned how to deal with Nazis. Republicans were doing to immigrants what the Nazis did to the Jews, blaming them for the middle classes and securities and failures to launch, dehumanizing them with lies and salacious stories, covering their possessions like business and real estate, mark menacing deportations, and pro proposing arrest registering them with serial numbers. Let's not forget the Holocaust was not Plan A. Plan A was mass deportations. The Holocaust was the final solution. Immigrants, both documented and undocumented, are major neck gains for America. Immigration is one of America's greatest strengths. If anyone in my community comes after immigrants, immigrants have to come for me first. And yeah, you know, I do agree that the a lot of people on the right are being overly mean to immigrants, but you know, a lot of people on the left are overly mean to white people and, and males and and heterosexual people. So you know, ultimately, you know, be mean to whoever you want to, but don't pretend to have the moral high ground when you bully people who descend just as hard. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have the conservative presence in libertarian circles helps libertari hurts libertarianism and helps conservatism by USMCBF. And they said, they said, let me just preface real quick. Then I will, I will get into it. And then I will get into it. The ease of understanding libertarianism and liberalism by an average person is extremely overestimated. That's why you, why you often hear are you missing libertarians or anti unions or libertarians want to get rid of the social system but not subsidies. You see, but does then there because there, then there's the ethics aspect, which is something that sometimes libertarians themselves are of a hard time understanding. For example, what is the right? Where do they come from? Where should the, go should the government do? Should the government even exist? And all the gray areas, natural rights, or simply the balance between the different libertarian ethics schools, which are often based on a se severely simplified black and white understanding of them. And they go on for a few more paragraphs, and yeah. But, you, you know, ultimately, I think people should be able to say whatever they want, and, and you know, if conservatives want to Go cozy up libertarians or liberals want cozy up libertarians. I think they should be able to. With that being said, you know I personally don't think conservatism or modern liberalism are that libertarian, and I, and I, and that's my thoughts on that. Actually, you know I think both of those are inherently collectivist garbage, and we need to get get rid of all this forced collectivism if we are truly to thrive as a, a species. I would say, and that's my thoughts there. Then we have. Why are the media portraying Trump as a business failure when the numbers indicate otherwise from Olu was a gunner and they said if Trump inherited four hundred million dollars of inflation just today's money, his ROI to reach five point five seven point seven billion dollars is five to six percent yearly, which is thirteen to twenty times the return of the, on his entire net worth. The ROI in real estate from which he took over is three to five percent of residential is five percent percent commercial. The failure rate is fifty sixty percent, which means most real estate businesses fail. If overall he managed to pull a twenty percent, that's really good. The guy was doing things right, his side project might have failed, but he still multiplies the family wealth. When, what, why does media push this image on Trump, of Trump as a failed businessman? I don't think any of them actually run a business. Prior to 2010's VC over speculation that subsidized failed businesses put lipstick on them and sell them up to chain. It was very common to fail until you make it. And you know, that's just, I think that it just goes to show you how the media narrative will be by, will, will, if, if, if they really be in dissent like they do with Donald Trump, you know, they'll just attack you constantly like they do with his business, business. Uh, failures, and that that just goes to show you. Even if even if he is r r relatively successful in business, you know, they'll still find a way to attack you over it. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have journalists who broke threat five of our welfare. Sam Scorey faces jail in Mississippi from Amazon.com by Humanitas Antiodium. And yeah, you know, ultimately, I think it's because they don't want to reveal their source. But you know, ultimately, you know, I think if people don't feel it, we shouldn't be forced to reveal their sources if they don't want to. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then finally, we have technophobic union demands a total ban on automation from Lemon Limelight, and they said uh, the AP reports is on the looming longshore men strike. Longshore men at key U.S. ports threatened to strike over automation and pay. I'm just added, and then they share some paragraphs from the article determined to thwart the automating of their jobs. The about 45,000 dock workers along the U.S. East and Gulf Coast are threatening to strike on October 1st, a move that would shut down ports to handle about half the nation's cargo from strip ships. The International Longshoremen's Union is demanding significantly higher wages and toll bound the automation from crane skates and container movements that are used in the loading of, or load, or loading of freight at 36 U.S. ports. And they add in the fact that the U.S. ports already draw their counterparts in Asian Europe and the use of automation only emphasizes the absurdity of the union's demand. And I would agree with that, you know, ultimately, if they want to strike for any reason, they should be able to, but, you know, automation is coming, and like it or not, you know, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, and that's my thoughts on that issue. So I think we're going to wrap up there. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.